Also a little later on in this hour, as companies, including the BBC, advertise jobs just for non-white people, I'll ask if you think that's acceptable. First, though, in this part of the programme, I want to speak to you about some adverts which are going on buses next month here in the UK. Throughout the month of Ramadan, buses in major cities across the country will carry adverts with the words Subhan Allah, which means glory be to God in Arabic. The adverts, paid for by the charity Islamic Relief, are aimed to inspire charitable donations to help refugees from conflicts around the world. The hope is that the adverts will show Muslims in a good light as generous people who are actively engaged in humanitarian work. In the past, posters by Christian organisations have been denied access to buses, so naturally there are critics who question why an advert from an Islamic group would be allowed. Well, in this hour we'll hear from Martin Cottingham. He'll be speaking on behalf of the charity at the heart of this story, Islamic Relief. We'll also hear from the Reverend David Holloway from the Christian Institute and we'll get some reaction from Tommy Robinson, who's the founder of the English Defence League and author of the book Enemy of the State. It's all about his time leading that group. Listen to what they all have to say. And, of course, as always, phone lines open for your views. Do you have a problem with the glory to Allah Arabic adverts being printed on buses in this country? 03459 455 555. Some texts coming through already. Uh, You can text me on 81333. Starting a text with 3CR. George says, to me, Subhan Allah, glory to God, is a little too similar to Allah Akbar. God is great, which is a standard phrase shouted by suicide bombers, killers, even today in Munich, and various religious nutjobs. Personally, I'd find it extremely offensive, especially if it was displayed on a number 30 bus in London. In other words, yes, the advertising should be banned, says George. Well, Martin Cottingham is from the charity Islamic Relief. Good morning to you, Martin. Good morning. So what's the, what's, what's the idea behind this, then? What's it all about? Well, first and foremost, this is a fundraising campaign. So we are an international aid agency. Um, We were set up in Birmingham in 1984, so we're a British charity, and we work in 33 countries. And what we do in those countries is we try to lift families out of poverty and we help people who are victims of of conflict and natural disaster. So the money raised from this campaign will be spent in those 33 countries, um, helping very vulnerable, very, very poor people. Um, and I think the, the, the advert as a whole, um, it's important to underline all the wording that will appear on the buses. So it will say, gather the rewards of Ramadan, subhanAllah, uh, donate now. Uh, so gather the rewards of Ramadan refers to uh, the belief of Muslims that um, this is a blessed month. Uh, and we're, we're highlighting uh, along the way, effectively, that this is a time of year when Muslims give very generously uh, to charity, which is often overlooked. And I think uh, Islamic relief advertising uh, during Ramadan uh, is just like Christian charities putting out adverts uh, at Christmas, which um, for the Christian community is a time when they think about charity and uh, give very generously. So it's all about raising money. The advert is to is to persuade Muslims to reach into their pocket and to and to give money. Can you understand why there has been some criticism? Um, I understand some of the criticism from some quarters. I I think some of it is misinformed and some of it is is misplaced. Uh, As I say, I I think an appropriate comparison is between Islamic Relief advertising during Ramadan uh, and Christian charities advertising at Christmas. The controversy about the Lord's Prayer advertisement that was banned by some cinemas is not really a fair comparison because that was about the Christian church wanting to put out religious advertisements. But... um, Uh, I would make an observation about that, which is that I am a Christian working for a Muslim charity, um, and I find so much of the values of my faith reflected in what Islamic Relief does as an organization. Its values uh, are universal humanitarian values. It's not a charity that's by Muslims for Muslims. It's helping people in need, regardless of what their faith is, what their ethnicity is. Um, And when that uh, Lord's Prayer advertisement controversy broke, speaking to my Muslim colleagues uh, in the office here in London, um, I did not find anybody who was offended by that advertisement. And some people actually said that they thought it was a shame that it had been banned because what can be wrong about encouraging people uh, to pray 
Um, so that's just an observation I, I, I would make about uh, that controversy, which, which was a separate matter, but is one that we have uh, thought about and talked about here at Islamic Relief. Martin, stay where you are, if you would, because I want to bring Tommy Robinson in. He is the former leader of the EDL, the English Defence League. Good morning to you, Tommy. Good morning. So this morning. is just about uh, trying to advertise, trying to get a message out there to the Muslim community. It's the time of Ramadan. Put your hand in your pocket, give some money, help Muslims in need <clears throat> around the world. Is, is there a problem with it? Um, well, I didn't realise I was going to be on with mine. I've never heard of mine. So I just thought, Mar- Martin, are you paid by this charity? Yes, I work for payroll? Islamic Relief. You are, oh, you're on a payroll for this charity. So you're on here talking on behalf of a charity that's paying you wages. I just wanted to clarify that. And Islamic Relief, do they help Ahmadiyya Muslims? Say again? Do they help Ahmadiyya Muslims? The most persecuted sect of Muslims in the world. Do they help them? Yes, as I said in the previous answer, Islamic Relief helps people of all faiths and none. So if you, if you take a country like Iraq, um, Islamic Relief is there assisting uh, Sunni Muslims, assisting Shia Muslims, assisting Christians, assisting Yazidis. Um, it's okay. regardless of faith or ethnicity, we help people in need. They are the people who count. OK, what's the, what's the need for it to be in Arabic? What's the need for it to be in Arabic? If we're, all about the, if we're all about the same God, the same God that you follow is the same God that Muslims follow. That's what you're saying. It's the same God. What is, um, what's the need for it to be in Arabic? One word in the advertisement is written in English script, but Arab, Arabic language, and that is subhanAllah. And, uh, no, and, and, commun- and Allah, what, and Allah. What, what's the need? SubhanAllah. What that means is glory to God. And what we're communicating is that we are, we are thankful um, as a charity um, because there's a lot of negativity around Muslims in this country, but there's also been a lot of negativity around international aid and what it actually achieves. And what we're trying to highlight through this uh, campaign is that actually international aid does a whole lot of good. The number of people in the world who live in extreme poverty has been halved in the last 15 years. Uh, And we want to say glory to God for that because we're thankful for that achievement. What I'm asking you is, um, you can say glory to God. What I'm asking you is why it has to be an Arab. Why Allah? Why not God? Why not glory to God? What's the reason? Well, um, when Muslims worship in this country... Pardon? When Muslims worship in this country, um, a a lot of the worship is in English, but there are also some words that are in Arabic because of the origins of the faith. Uh, And that is why that word is there. But uh, one of the things that we hope is to create a talking point, to create a debate, for people to learn what that word means, for people to go onto our website, which, you know, the, 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 the link for our website also appears on the advertisements. And when they go online, what they will read is uh, why we've used that word, um, why why we're thankful for what's been achieved in international aid, why we can be thankful for what we can all achieve by by donating in Ramadan to make a positive difference to people in poverty. There's a reason why there's a reason why Muslims are seen or some Muslims are seen in a negative way in the UK. There's a reason why um, aid is seen in a negative way in the UK as well. There's a reason for that. And the word Allah, as, as someone who messaged this show has rightly put, put right, every time we hear that, as this morning, this morning in Germany and Munich, a Muslim has gone in showing Allah Akbar. Now, what happens in the UK, while you're keeping in Arabic, what happens in the UK, I was listening to Heart FM earlier, and the news reporter said a man has gone into a train station in Munich and stabbed four people shouting, God is great. The news reporter took it upon himself to translate it to translate it, to keep, the, keep the, to keep the message away from where it's coming from. The word Allah, when you're talking about Allah's teachings, if I want to talk about Allah's teachings and start looking into Islam, I see, I see death for apostates. That's what Allah taught. That's what Allah told Muhammad, according to Muslims. Death for apostates, death for someone who wishes to leave Islam. I don't want, and I don't think any religious um, writing should be put on any buses, not, ju- not, ju- not just Islamic, but I don't see why we're bending over backwards as well. I read that the Transport for London had a policy of no religious um, advertisement. But yet, straight away, we're, we're letting Muslims can advertise straight away. Of so course just, they can. They can do whatever they want. So, Tommy, just out of interest then, what, what is the problem that you have with the advert itself? If you know that the meaning behind the advert, it's not to encourage people to become a Muslim. It's not oh, to... It is. I think it's with Oh, really? Islam. Well, I, that's what I was going to ask. Do you feel that the meaning behind this is actually more sinister? Yeah, I don't think we... I think Islam is completely shoved in our face every day. And I don't think they should be. If you want to be a Muslim, be a quiet Muslim. Don't shove it in our face. Stop telling us you're Muslim. I don't want to hear Allah Akbar screamed again, because every time I hear the word Allah, it's to do a terrorism, rape, murder or torture. 
That's what it's become synonymous with, and that's not my fault. That's Muslims' fault. Well, that's well, what it's come synonymous with. Well, no, no, hang, hang on, Tom. I mean, you've got you've got to be reasonable. It's not Muslims' fault. It's a it's a minority of complete and utter, oh, as they referred to earlier, nut jobs within the Muslim no, no, community. No, no, yeah, yeah, they're still Muslim. So it, it's Muslims' fault. It's fellow Muslims' fault. It's not my fault. Yeah. I haven't destroyed the phrase "God is great" in Arabic. Muslims have. They've done it worldwide. Muslim well, leaders have done it. Martin, Tommy, and, 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 to, Tommy is voicing a, a concern, and surely you will accept that he's reflecting maybe a concern that, from some of my listeners as well this morning, that there is a move towards greater and greater acceptance of, of, of Islam in this country, and he's worried by that. Do you accept that? Well, first of all, uh, Tommy has drawn attention to an incident in Munich uh, today. And um, one of the things I would want to say unequivocally is that Islamic Relief um, is, uh, detests terrorism in all its manifesta manifestations. And, uh, you know, the, the, um, the targeting of civilians in conflict as well. That's not what we stand for. We're a humanitarian agency. Uh, and he's, he's um, choosing to pick a fight with Islam, with a whole religion, about this advertising campaign, which is by... No. Single, which is about by a single Muslim charity and uh, one of the scriptures from the Quran that we um, are particularly inspired by uh, at Islamic Relief is what is one that says uh, if, if you have if you've taken the life of one person it's as if you've taken the life of all mankind and if you if you yeah, just, just let Martin life, finish the point and then sure uh, you can. Uh, yes I didn't interrupt you Tommy um, if you've saved the life of one person you've saved the life of all mankind Li life is precious um, we're an organized that's that's working to to save lives in some of the most difficult and dangerous places in the world uh, and and as far as Muslims in the UK are, are concerned the vast majority of the British uh, Muslim population are hugely proud to be British and they're proud of the freedom of speech here uh, and the values of, of British society they're very hard-working and law-abiding and we hope this campaign will help to show that side of the Muslim community which is too often uh, hidden away behind stereotypes which um, which come from the associations of terrorism which are inevitably out there Tommy um, Martin how dare you as a Christian come on the radio and use the verse 532 which is what you just said which in the Quran it says if you kill one man you kill all of humanity why not put it in context and read out the very next verse that says unless they have caused mischief in the land. Then they can be executed, have their hands and feet cut off and exiled from the land. How dare you come on the radio and use a verse like that to try and portray Islam in a positive and peaceful light when the very next verse, if you put it in context, speaks about murdering people who have caused mischief. And, and top imams and top scholars in Saudi Arabia declare mischief as simply being non-Muslim, like you are, Martin. Unfortunately, you're on the payroll. I'd have much rather had a Muslim representative of that charity on here so we could push their views on punishment for apostasy, push their views on punishment for homosexuality, and push their views on integration in the UK, which we're not going to get. And I'm disgusted that you're even on the radio as a Christian okay, to, to, touting a to, false objective. To, to, Tommy, Tommy, let, let, let's keep it civilised. I mean, it's been a fairly civilised discussion up until now. There's no need to be too... It's not until he started. No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask him to address that, but you, you yeah, don't I'm, need to be I'm, as aggressive as you're being. I, I'm Martin's not being aggressive at all towards I'm you. Martin, how, being, how do you... I'm, I'm not being aggressive, I'm okay, being passionate. So, fine. so Martin, Martin, tell me about what verse 533. The very next verse, Vic, open the Quran, read out what you just said, if you kill one man, if you kill all of humanity, and read the very next verse. Tommy, I'm not going to get into a detailed conversation with you about every verse in the it's Quran, life. because I, I, I think that's... No, I think that is going to create more... But can you respond to that one point, that, that as far as Tommy is concerned, he's frustrated that you've, you've quoted a part of the Quran uh, that portrays Islam in a very positive light, in a very peaceful and caring light. Tommy's saying that if you continue to read, the very next section actually is not nearly as positive, is not nearly as generous. It's all about killing people and cutting their hands and feet off. Do you accept that? Well, I, I, I merely quoted a verse of the Quran, which is among many that inspire Islamic relief. And what I've underlined is that Islamic relief stands unequivocally against killing people. Islamic relief is about saving lives. But do you accept the that the Quran, the Quran is not as peaceful as maybe you've just portrayed it to be? Uh, I don't, because uh, I believe profoundly from the Muslims that I have met and that I work with that Islam is a religion of peace. And I think that there are a few 
fanatics who have distorted the core of the religion um, and claimed Islam as a as a cover uh, for acts of extreme violence, but which, how is, can you, which how, is given no justification um, by the scriptures that they claim to follow. But how can you talk of it being distorted when it is as clear as, as Tommy has just outlined it to be? I mean, the words, uh, you can't argue with the words, it's there in black and white. Well, um, again, I would say he, he is picking out um, particular. No, you're picking parts out. No, the... you picked out, mate. You picked out Martin. You're a disgrace, Martin. Disgrace to Christianity and a disgrace to England. You're on here selling an Islamic coin when you're supposed to be a Christian. You're trying to further the goals of Islam in the UK, which we see happening day by day by sellout coward leaders like yourself. You're, you're on a payroll. To- to- Tommy, on, Tommy, Tommy, back, back off the personal in- insults. Let's just focus well, on the it. point. Yeah. Well, the point is, Mike, the point is, he, he's saying that I'm picking out verses. He just picked out a verse in the Quran to try and sell us that Islam is a religion of peace without putting it in context. And he's lying to your audience. He's lying to the general public, which is what's happening across the UK. It's what happened on Heart FM this morning when the radio presenter said someone shouted, God is great. No, they didn't. They shouted, Allah is greatest. Listen, That's Tommy. Stop, Tommy. Stop lying to the public. Stop lying to the public. Listen. Stop lying. Tell the truth. If you wasn't I'm, on the payroll, I'm, I'm a Christian, as I said already. already. OK, let, let Martin respond. I'm a Christian, if I've said, as I've said already. Uh, if I were looking at the, the, the Christian Bible, um, it would be easy to select verses from the Old Testament um, which suggest, uh, in, in terms of who's smiting other people and, 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 and what God is doing, that, that um, would be very difficult uh, to defend as anything other than extremely dis- discriminatory and, and violent. Uh, I, I think that would be to misrepresent Christianity, which is a religion of love and peace. Uh, and I feel the same about Islam, and I feel it from from the values pay, and the, pra- the, value, but, but the sh- values and the practices of the people that I live and work with uh, every day working for Islamic Relief. I've worked previously for Christian Aid and for Oxfam. I find the people that work for Islamic Relief are incredibly uh, uh, passionate and genuine, and they believe in a better world, and they believe in peace, and they believe in equality, and they believe that people who are living in poverty uh, have a right to be lifted out of poverty and to be supported by an organisation like Islamic Relief. Do you, do, you think, do you think that Muslims in the UK should be able to leave Islam freely then? That, as, a, as, a, as a representative of Islamic Relief, do you support the right of a Muslim to change their mind and leave Islam and convert to Christianity? Do you support that? Personally, I do support freedom of religious belief and expression, and Islamic Relief would too. This is a, this is a plural society. It's a society where people can make choices of that kind. But I would well, say Islamic, there are so, Islamic there are so, Islamic so many, of Islam. there are so many people in the world that don't have the choices that we enjoy in this country. Uh, and those are choices to have, um, to, to have some certainty that their child will live to their, their fifth birthday because there is clean water for them to drink. Th- those are the kind of inequalities and opportunities that we are trying to uh, address in our work. Isn't one of the difficulties, though, when you, when you defend the, the Quran and when you defend your, your reading of one particular passage of the Quran? That, that portrays itself to be very peaceful and very caring, isn't the problem that you have when you then compare it with the Old Testament that, of course, the Bible, the Old Testament, the New Testament, written by, by people who were trying to, to uh, give a, an illustration of what God wanted, whereas the Quran is supposed to be the actual word of God. So Christians can always argue that you can pick and choose bits because it wasn't the direct word of God, it was an interpretation of the word of God. It's very difficult to do that with the Quran because you're supposed to follow it to the letter. No, I, I think that, that is, with respect, a bit of a simple comparison because um, the, the followers of Christianity uh, and of Islam would both regard their holy text as the word of God. But the Quran is the absolute word of God, the Bible is not. Well, I, I've, I've um, made no, the comparison sorry, that I believe you. is true, which, which is that Christians and Muslims believe their holy text to be the word of God. And that means, in effect, the absolute word of God. Um, but, but there are uh, matters of discussion and interpretation. I've made very clear that the inspiration from Islamic Relief, we are a faith-based organization. Yeah. Um, so but, uh, but... we are inspired by the Muslim faith. But our, our practice uh, as an organisation, we are a humanitarian organisation. Sure, but and do you we, understand what we that... to do is to help uh, yeah. people in need, people in poverty. But Mark, do you, do you... 
Go, go on, Tommy. Martin, you you Martin, jump in. Martin, have you read the Quran? I've not read the Quran in its entirety, oh, no. Jesus Christ. So you haven't read the Quran. You just, what is this all? It's like, what are you doing? What are you even doing on here? You're, you're on here furthering and defending Islam, and you know nothing about it. You know nothing. What do you know about the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad? Well, what, what do you know about the teachings of, uh, you've just blasphemed Jesus Christ, who is, who is a prophet in Islam and who is the son of God no, in Christianity. No, luck, luckily, just no one's going to kill me in the UK. Casually, in, throwing, in throwing insults at me, you've, you've blasphemed um, the son of God in, in your religion if you're a Christian. Um, so L- I think luckily, no one's going to want to kill me in the UK for that. Please, please look at what you're doing and saying as well, Tommy. I, I would implore well, you. I mean, I, I met... Martin, but you're on, you're on the radio defending Islam and you know nothing about it. You're not giving us quotes from the Quran that you know nothing about. Can- you are being used as a useful idiot by an Islamic charity to further the goals of Islam in the UK. OK, let me just... Ju- What's happening here? Let me, let me just jump in here, Marty. Do you, do you accept that Tommy is representing a view from some people who have great concerns about Islam in the UK? Um, maybe this bus advert, at a time when surely as a society we're trying to heal any kind of divisions and make sure that everybody rubs along nicely together without without fearing one another, do you think this advert was was mistimed? No, I don't. I think that the discussion we're having now illustrates why this kind of advertising uh, is valuable because we're able to have a discussion in which both sides of the argument uh, are heard. I met for the first time last week Nadia Hussein who won uh, Great British Bake Off last year. I went to an event where she was speaking uh, and one of the reasons why I think she is great is because she represents the mainstream Muslim community in this country but she has been embraced by the people of this country because um, she's funny, she's bright, She's hardworking. Uh, people have warmed to her. And, and, and that's, that's the experience I've had of the vast majority of Muslims that I've met and worked with uh, in the UK. But Nadia said in the course of the interview that she was doing at this event, um, of course, I felt wonderful to have succeeded in this competition and to have been embraced in the way that I have been by the vast majority of the people in the UK. But I still have a minority of people who say quite unpleasant things to me on social media. And she said, I recently baked a cake for the Queen's uh, 90th birthday and somebody said to me you're going to want to bleach your hands before you serve that cake to the queen um, and I think because that kind of a opinion is out there because that kind of nastiness is out there um, the Muslim community um, the black community in this country should not be expected to sit on its hands uh, and take that kind of abuse and that kind th- those kind of awful uh, allegations and, and attacks on the chin, they should be able to be themselves in this country, which is one of the things that makes Britain great. Okay. They should be able to express their faith, to express their personalities. Sure. Nadia is a great embodiment of that, and I would argue that Islamic Relief is too, a great British charity okay. that's been going for 32 years in this country. Martin, thank you very much indeed for your time. Martin Cottingham is from the charity Islamic Relief. Uh, thanks to Tommy Robinson as well, who's the founder of the EDL. He's the author of Enemy of the State, a book about his time leading that organisation. Organization. Well, I'll take some of your calls and I'll read some of your texts and we'll get some reaction from Rav- Reverend David Holloway as well after the news headlines. If you want to have your say, 03459 455 555. That are coming through on 81333, starting the text with 3CR. Andrew says, I'm a bus driver and I can tell you now, even if it means losing my job, I will refuse to drive a vehicle with this displayed. Um... In my opinion, this will only fuel the fire that is going on in this country. Monty says people need to get a life. If you see something on a bus, you have a choice to read it. It's not forced on you. It's not shoved in your face. You're not strapped down and shown it repeatedly. If people let something as trivial as this affect their life, then I believe said person has deeper personal problems. David Marston says Tommy Robinson is talking the truth at last. Marion and Hemel says JV has a message for Tommy. Is the Bible positive throughout? The suggestion there, I assume, Marion, is that you feel it's not. So it's uh, unfair to attack Martin for picking out one particular positive bit of the Quran. Reverend David Holloway is the vicar of Jesmond and a trustee of the Christian Institute. Good morning to you. Thanks for coming on. 
What do you make of these buses then? The buses with the advert that will say glory to Allah in Arabic. Is that acceptable? Well, can I say, I obviously speak as a Christian. I, I'm a clergyman. Uh, so I don't agree with key doctrines of Islam, not least the denial of the cross of Christ, that Christ died uh, for our sins and that he is God incarnate. But I do um, endorse freedom for Muslims in this country. There, there must be freedom of and for religion. Um, and that, that is really the litmus test of real liberty in any nation. But there must be equality. You've already uh, alluded to that. If Muslims could put praise Allah on buses, Christians must be allowed to put Jesus is Lord on buses. And uh, it must be certain that the money donated... But this is different, isn't it? This is not an advert suggesting that people should convert to Islam. This is not an advert that says people should go to the mosque. It's, It's not an advert with that intention at all. It's a message to Muslims in this country that during the month of Ramadan they should be generous, put their hands in their pocket and help people around the world. Yes, but the para message uh, goes out that uh, this is that people should be honouring Allah. Um, And I I think that the the key problem with regard to money going around the world is, is it clear that the money donated at uh, Ramadan is, and through this advert, is going to humanitarian causes, which are noble and indeed what uh, the Islamic Relief no doubt does, I'm sure, and for all, not just Muslims, but uh, I hope Christians, Jews and others. And it's not given to uh, Muslim armed jihadist groups. And I think there there was I found the discussion you had between Martin and Tommy fascinating because um, Tommy was actually right in his uh, what he he, re, he quoted from the Quran, and I mean Muhammad of course rode into Medina to conquer Jesus, rode into Jerusalem to die, um, and there there is that issue and and why we've got to where we've got in terms of liberty of religion, is because. Uh, in Britain, we do not believe that force may be used to promote religion. I mean, that goes back, uh, way back to the um, wars of religion and following that. And uh, John Locke and others said that uh, you must argue, but you may not use the law or you may not use violence to enforce religion. Religion must be free. And that came from the, it's ironical, it, that comes from the Christian teaching uh, uh, that God is not only a God of love, but God respects human freedom. And that comes from Jesus' teaching on the doctrine of hell, whereas if uh, you, you reject God, God won't force you to accept him. So, so freedom is fundamentally bound up with the Christian faith. And, and, and the Christian faith is, I'm afraid, being discriminated against these days because we try to advertise Christianity Explored. That's a, a view of Alpha. Some people know of Alpha. Well, it's um, uh, from another London church, Christianity Explored. We use that up here, and we just advertise it on the... Um, well, we w- weren't allowed to advertise it on the Tyneside Metro. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Reverend David Holloway is a vicar of Jesmond and trustee of the Christian Institute, so he feels that there are double standards going on here and it is unfair towards Christianity. Lynn simply asks, Jonathan, why can't the phrase be written in English? Sanjay has called to have his say. Hello, Sanjay. Hi, mate. You're right, John. Hi, what are your thoughts? Um, my thoughts um, it's a it's a Christian country and it has been for 1,500 years. They shouldn't be putting things like that on here because Islam is not a, a religion of peace. It's certainly not a religion. It's a I- bad idea which has caused nothing but pain for 1,400 years. When it started, it's, all it's been doing was conquering land and raping and taking over everyone's land. If you go back in the history, these are facts. There's nothing peaceful about it. It's complete alienation. All I see is their women completely alienated in the UK. They're segregated. They're not integrating at all. I don't like how the Muslim women cover themselves up and non-Muslim men can't go with Muslim women, but yet the, um, non, uh, the Muslim men can target non-Muslim women. It just doesn't make no sense. You know, this is so... And the worst thing is, within 20 years from now, there's going to be such a backlash. It'll be a civil war, and people don't realise that they're sitting there and there's all these left-wing liberals. All I can say is that Tommy Robinson... Whoa, 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 whoa. So, so, whoa. So, Sanjay, ca- calm down. Yeah, okay. why, why are you getting yourself all, all het up over this? I'm getting myself more heated up because of what Muslims have done to Hindus in India for a thousand. They've killed over 100 million Hindus. But this, hang, on, hang on one second. This, this, yeah. th- we're talking about this country. We're talking about Muslims in this country. We're talking about an advert. Okay. The, the message is purely to mm. Muslims during the month of Ramadan, put mm. your hand in your pocket and help people around the world who need it. Why, why are you getting yourself so... so Stroppy about this. Uh, okay, I'm wound up about this. It shouldn't be. They shouldn't be promoting it on a bus because the reason is. But you is know, it? Do you think it is promotion? I think it is promoting because you know, especially weak-minded, left-wing, liberal, gullible people, and especially little children. I don't want them reading things like that on a bus in England. 
2016. I want Britain to be a beautiful country with everyone uh, peacefully uh, respects everyone's religion and be British, Britain, British first, before any silly idea. It's just getting kind of ridiculous, and that's why I'm getting angry. I'm, okay. affected, when, I'm affected when I see 1,400 little girls raped. I'm affected by that as a British yeah, I'm affected, yeah. Okay, Sanjay, thank you very much for your call. 03459 four double five five double five. Mickey in Hatfield. Hello, Mickey. Good morning. What would you like to say, Mickey? Um, the, the long, I, I've expressed my opinion to you on, on your show many times. I mean, the long and short of it is I believe that religion is the root of all evil. And, you know, as much as I, I believe it may be good for people to practice religion at home, I do not believe it should be in education, in school. It should not be advertised. It should not be displayed publicly. Um, unfortunately, I do believe that out of all of the religions, Islam so is... So how, t- how do you far do you take that, then? If the, if the church is having a coffee morning to raise money for, for refugees, do you think they should not be allowed to put a, a board outside their church welcoming people in to come and have a coffee? Oh, my personal opinion is that churches should not be funded... Churches, full stop, should have no well, type how, of how on, uh, how, Well, for, we'll, we'll get on to the question in a second, but how on earth do you think a church would be able to run if there was no money behind it? Well, I don't. That's my point, exactly. Church, your religion should be practiced from home. It should not be practiced in a public building. But, with but, that, but that's, very da- that's very dangerous, Mickey. That's very dangerous. To give people religion on an individual basis in their own home means that you have no control, you have no idea over what is being taught and what people are being told. Surely what we what we need in this country, with all religions, is to make sure that the people who are preaching, the people who are sending the message, they are people who are sending the right kind of message and not the wrong kind of message. But then again, how do you verify and qualify that the message that anybody is sending is right? Is it not a matter of opinion? The more that I've studied into various religions, the more confused I've been. And I I believe it or not, I'm a relatively intelligent guy, and I have spent a lot of time looking in various religions. And the more you look, the harder a job it gets. And I think that at the end of the day... But you have to, you, but M- Mickey, people. look, I'm not religious either. I don't need religion in my life. I feel I can be a good person without religion in my life. But we have to accept religion is here to stay. You and I, um, atheists, we, we are never going to eradicate religion. So we have to accept religion is, is here to stay. We have to work with that religion. And we also have to make sure that any religions that are preached in this country are preached in a peaceful way and not in, a, in an unpeaceful way. OK, do you, do you want to know what my honest opinion is? And I, I appreciate what you're saying. In this country, things have gone very smoothly, well, relatively smoothly, for, for a very, very long time. Um, the problem with particular religions like Islam, and I don't want to make it, you know, a, a, a Islamophobic conversation because I'm really not like that. But the long and short of it is there is such a massive more amount of Islam, Islam followers in the world, and a lot of them are negative. Now, proportionately, if you've got um, 10 times the amount of uh, people following Islam, and even the same percentage of negative people as there is in any other religion, the fact that there's so many more of them means that there's so many more negative followers. Now, I believe that by bringing that religion into this country is going to have a massive impact. And once, once the levels start becoming unbalanced and they start becoming more influent in society, we're going to see it nearly impossible to go back to okay. what England once was. Mickey, thank you very much for your call. Ollie in Hotcliffe. Hello, Ollie. Good afternoon, Jerry. How are you? Yeah, I'm well, thank you. What would you like to say? I, I think it's absolutely bang out of order. You know, I mean, it, forgetting about religion in, in for, for a second in, in terms of promoting anything, it, to, to, to deny one religion, you know, Christianity, any religion, to deny one religion, to then go and accept another religion and say, yeah, you know, you, you, yeah, you, can, you can put a, a, an advertisement on the side of us. So where's the logic in that? You know, how, 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 can you, how can you differentiate and say, sorry, Christians, you can't put an advert on the side of this bus, you know, we, you, it's not right. Oh, Islam, but, it, yeah, but, but this is not an advert promoting the religion. It's an advert aimed at people of that religion to ask them to give money for charitable causes. But, but if you want to encourage giving money to charity, why, why, why involve religion? You know, it, it, it doesn't need religion involved in it. 
you, you can say it, you, it doesn't need to be in Arabic. It, you, but it's organised by a charity religion. called Islamic Relief, and it's it's aimed at helping Islamic countries around the world that have starving children. I mean, that's the reason why it's aimed at that particular religion. But what, why why aim to, uh, an advert in, that's encouraging cha- giving money to charity to a religion? Why not say, you know, about giving money to charity, and then you know, have at the bottom is Islam. What, the, the name of the chat? Why, why do you need to involve, you know, first of all, Arabic words, and second of all, you know, God is great in Arabic, Allah something. It's, it's, it's not the right time or the place. I, I, I just okay. completely disagree with it. But I'll, I'll I'll, that... I'll, ultimately, though, Ollie, I mean, you say it's not the right time. What do you mean by that? Well, there's a lot of negative things going on with Islam at the moment, and a lot of a lot of misunderstanding. I think that at this at this time, I think putting a poster, especially about Islam, uh, sorry, an advert about Islam, at the current time is 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 it's it's, it's just going to cause more division. You know, the people that don't agree with it are going to get more angry, and the people that do agree with it are going to get angry with the people that don't agree with it. What? Why? Just just encourage giving money to charity. Why bring a religion into it? Oh, yeah, it's Ramadan, but say you know, Ramadan's coming up. Give money to charity, and then. It, it, it doesn't make sense to me. It's just going to cause further further divisions. Because I, my personal opinion, I wouldn't get on a bus without that on the side. I'd walk. I, I wouldn't get on that. I don't agree with it. You're, you're seriously saying you would rather walk than get on a bus that had that advert? Yeah, out of principle, I would not walk. It's a Christian country to deny a Christian, to deny Christianity an advert on the side of a bus, but then let Islam put it on the side of a bus. You know, you. you it's, it's wrong. It's, it's but but this is different. This is different. I mean, if the advert was saying convert to Islam read the Quran and convert to Islam, then I can understand what you're talking about. But this is, this is not an advert that says that. This is the same as a Christian, um, Christian charity, for example, having an advert saying, please give money to help migrants in Calais, um, and mm-hmm. the, the advert is, is paid for by you know, Christian concern or whatever, whatever charity it would be, whatever organisation it would be. It's not a religious uh-huh. advert. But I, well, if it's not a religious advert, why, why do they have to put it in Arabic? You know, it's an English-speaking country. Why, 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 why not put it in English? I think it is. It is. You know, underlying it is prior in Islam. You know, whether, okay. whether you believe it or not, it, it is. Why not? Why, why not put it in English? Why, why do you need to do that? Okay. Thank you very much for your call, Ollie. I'll take more of you. Alison in Milton Keynes. Hello, Alison. Hello, Jonathan. Hello. What are your thoughts on this? Oh, not very good at all. I'm afraid, but. Um... I, I really am against it. I think it's totally out of order. Why? Like you said, we can't have Christian things printed on buses. So but there's, but there's a, di- we have to, we a have lot to, of trouble. Yeah, but we have to accept there's a difference. The Christian adverts that have not been allowed in the past have been, in effect, saying, come to church, come and be a Christian. Come and not worship all of God. Them haven't. There's been a lot of uh, signs of raising money for Christians because um, my children go to a Christian church. And they go to messy play, and a lot of the signs are not actually dragging them into the religion. It's just putting money into charities and teaching them to be kind to people. It's not actually based on that sort of thing. I think it's completely out of order. So it's double standard, says Alison. Thank you for your call. Neil in Hemel. Hello, Neil. Good morning, Jonathan. Hello, Neil. How do you feel about this? Um, It's to promote a, a Muslim charity that supports Muslim people. Well, this is, well, supposedly a Christian country. Why can we not then tell, tell Christian aid you can only support Christian people in Christian countries? It's absolutely... It's, it's sick, perverted, beyond, the, beyond any point of sensibility. What, so you have a problem with an Islamic charity wanting to help Muslims? Exactly. Why? Why? Because Christian aid help Muslims... Do, do, do the Muslims want to help the Christians? No. But if the if the money is going to Muslim countries, then there will be Christian people who will be helped by that money as well. Really? <laughs> well, well, that's what we were told earlier. That's what we were told oh, yeah. earlier. Yeah, like you, know, like you believe everything that religion tells you. It's just a whole lot of nonsense, John. OK. It really is. Thank you, Neil, for your call. Uh, Sri in Luton. Hello, Sri. Hello. Hello. What would you like to say? Uh, I'd like to say I agree with you. What you, uh, a few points you said earlier that we have to live with religion and go away. I agree with that, and we have to work with it. The other thing I would like to say is that it's just an advert. 
But I can understand the certain sentiment with the public that about the negativity about Islam and they're reluctant to go on the buses. I think that's that's taking it too extreme. It's only on for a month and it's only asking people to give money for charity. Like you said... But do you, you think... M- but maybe people feel that it's the it's the drip-drip effect. It's the drip-drip effect of, of more and more things to do with Islam becoming mm. part of our, our normal world in this country. And... That's what people, I think, maybe have a concern about. They're thinking, well, I don't want this kind of... We're becoming more and more... It's becoming more and more acceptable to write things in Arabic, to have adverts with the word mm. Allah on. It's just becoming more and more normal, and that's what people are worried about. I, yeah, I, 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 I sympathise. I do sympathise with that concern. Are you Muslim yourself? Yeah, I do practice the faith, okay. and I, I was very, I, I was very, I was take, I took exception with Tommy Robinson when he was on the platform with the other fellow from the uh, Islamic Relief. Islamic Relief have been around for about thirty years, I think, and there was no, none of these kind of issues. It's just over the last five years or so. There's been obviously there has been incidents, major incidents, which have, you know, have concerned people. I think you mentioned something about EasyJet, a loss in profits earlier. I think about due to people not taking flights because of concerns and things of that nature. But I think uh, I, it's just about giving money or it's being charitable. I think John can give another example about like a small village church with a board outside that helping refugees. We have like a Sunday morning get together to uh, raise money for charity. It's in, that, it's in that light. OK, three, thank you very much. Carl in Luton. Hello, Carl. Hi there. Thank you for putting me through, Jonathan. Um, my point is that um, I'm a bit concerned about the people who call us a Christian country, when most people have denounced their religion in this country over many years. If you go back to the 60s or 70s, most people's parents and that would have never even gone to church. And they're getting all let up about a religion which is growing in the country because these people still believe in it. And that's, that's their, their own choice. So I there's mean, no, no problem with the bus? Well, no, not really. I've got no problem with any but he put in any religions, religious signs on the bus. But I just find it kind of ironic that people have denounced their religion in this country and are now et up about other people who want to practice their religion in this country. Most people have taken the view that religion is something that they don't need in their life because of their, the way they've been informed, the way they've got more access to information now with the internet and stuff sure. like that. People, just, people decided that you know, that religion sort of something that's made up and left in the dark ages, which it, it was there to um, control the population, to make the population uh, live in a better way. And now, obviously, this, this is not uh, something that's needed anymore. It's uh, something that's gone by the way by most people in this country. Carl, thank you very much for your call.